Since the first time I saw the concept art for this thing, it has puzzled me greatly. The Wujing War Compass is an odd unit to be sure. Uh, it's sort of a weird, slow support chariot. Today, I'm taking two in a land battle against Gojira's Demons of Chaos, Demons Undivided. So let's take a look here at the builds as the fun gets started with some artillery exchange. So the idea here is that uh, the whole point of the compasses is the mastery of the elemental winds. Yes, they do come with some spells. You've got Celestial Comet and Celestial Lightning, but you can see there the intensity is up to 160%, and that is because we've got several units covering mastery of the elemental winds. Five units, in fact. We've got the Lord, the two compasses, and then two alchemists on foot with nothing. Leadership support, and of course that mastery of the elemental winds. Uh, do be aware that this comet and the lightning are a little bit different from the regular uh, comet and lightning because they have significantly longer cast range, but look at the amount of damage that they're going to do. And most importantly, with the Shugengon Lord, if I cast spells with her, she's got an item here that will give additional winds of magic regeneration every time I cast this Jade Amulet here. Technically, uh, along with the additional winds of magic recharge rate you get from the compasses, you can get infinite winds of magic. A little bit of an exploit probably will be patched out at some point, but the rest of the build here got Longmas, some Peasant Long Spears, some Jade Warriors, a couple of Peasant Archers. One rocket, one cannon, and some peasant horsemen in the back to protect. It's tough to predict against uh, Demons of Chaos, what you'll see. But Gojira coming in here with uh, Feathered Prince, the Zinch Demon Prince. He's got a Soul Grinder of Nurgle, Blue Horrors, Pink Horrors through the center. Flesh Hounds out on the flanks, along with some Screamers up in the air, and some Nurglings for Meat Shields. So initially, I'm going to be focusing my cannon fire on... The Soul Grinder, this could prove to be a little bit of a mistake, but I figured, you know, Zavrik here flying around in the air. The, uh, Zary, yeah, Zavrik. Yeah, we'll go with that. <laughs> He's uh, got Barrier, he can fly around, potentially dodge some of the shots. I figured it would be hard for me to deal consistent damage to him, and I'd wanted to take out the uh, Mortar, the Soul Grinder. You can see he's already doing some pretty good damage to my Peasant Archers, but I'm definitely making a mistake here in having my Peasant Long Spears up front. I definitely should have pulled them to the back to protect my flanks and my rear against the Hounds, and let the Jade Warriors with their Armor and Missile Block Chants just take the shots here, obviously, of the Blue Horrors. They would be taking a lot less damage, but still... One thing about the compasses, they also have pretty heavy armor, which will help. The armor and the missile resistance will mitigate quite a bit of the damage of the horrors shooting, even though quite a bit of it still will get through if they choose to focus. But right now, just going after my infantry out on the flank here, we're going to have a little bit of a pitched engagement. This is going to go very poorly for these peasant horsemen. And the longest two, even diving into this without a ton of support, they just get outnumbered so heavily by the flesh hounds. And you can see my front line just getting bathed in Zinchian fire. There are a lot of volume. That is the thing about Zine shooting, is 160 models with that much DPS on shooting is quite ridiculous. That being said, we've almost finished off the Soul Grinder with the cannons here. Uh, more Flesh Hounds collapsing over on this flank. Not great. The uh, Fire Rain Rocket bugging out a little bit there and kind of making its way forward into combat. Shugengon Lord is up in the air, getting tangled up with Screamers, which is not great, but we'll watch for the spell Mastery as the... Uh, yeah, I think I just had casted the spell there. You can see that Jade Amulet procking. I'll have to show you guys in a live cast sometime exactly how that works, but with these lower Winds of Magic cost spells, up to 70% damage resistance, though, on Jade Shield. I'm going to be casting that on herself here very shortly as she fights in this combat against these Screamers. We'll definitely afford her quite a bit of protection. Honestly, that spell mastery mechanic for Cathay is quite strong, but you do get forced into bringing the compasses, which uh, are not all that great in combat. They're going to be sticking around here, and certainly they'll tank quite well, especially in a situation where they're not being focused heavily, and primarily Gojira's build is not armor piercing here, but a huge friendly fire there. I thought that was actually the lightning strike. In fact, I'd click the comet, so just absolutely eliminate a couple of my own jade warriors, which is really not great. I really needed them in order to sustain into the late game, but uh, that's okay. Still fighting in the meantime, and unfortunately the duration of that uh, jade shield there is not particularly long, so even though it is quite powerful with the extra charging up of the elemental winds still i'm gonna end up taking quite a bit of uh very cost inefficient damage from those screamers not ideal at all but another thing about the compass is it doesn't have magic attacks even though you think it might probably it should to be honest but yeah um it's kind of just here 160 weapon strength is melee in melee is not a ton it is something 
Uh, it will be do a tiny bit of damage over time, but you, you see the attack animations here. As that Soul Grinder also just took the full friendly fire from that Warp Flame, or sorry, the Blue Fire uh, Magic Missile spell there. Like 100% made contact with the Soul Grinder. But anyway, you look, watch the attack animations, and this thing definitely seems like it should do magic damage. I mean, this guy's like blasting out little, little wind bends out the side here. You would think that does magic damage, but uh, apparently not. Anyway. Taking a look at the uh, balance power, things are not looking great here, but at the same time, I mean, this guy's damage output is not amazing. 45 attack is obviously quite good. Flaming with uh, Warp Fire does increase this by just 11%, right? Gives him an extra, what, 40 damage or so. But uh, even still, lowish attack means that he's not going to make the most consistent contact in the world. So we should be able to kind of stabilize here and hopefully start to wear things down, start to take some of the shots on the Jade Warriors. Uh, yeah, the, they can kind of pursue these pink horrors here. The pink horrors are substantially faster, but another friendly fire comet there just to really <laughs> seal the deal. My comet placements so far have really not been great, but uh, look at this. That 70% damage resistance, man, managed to block the majority of that magic missile there, that blue fire. So... Although it is uh, requiring a lot of Winds of Magic, you might think, again, because that spell is so low, as long as I can keep all of these different casting pieces online, I'll be able to maintain mastery and maintain that better Winds of Magic rate. Not that the alchemists actually help your magic generation at all. Again, it's all about the compasses in this replay. That's a little bit of a blue fire there from, or pink fire rather, from... Feather Prince, who has taken absolutely zero damage so far. So although Gojira doesn't have a lot of tools that are great for killing the compasses, I really don't have any tools for killing uh, Mr. Feather Prince here. I mean, other than trying to fight him in combat with the Shingon Lord, but at this point with no healing, I really don't have an option to do so. She's just taking way, way too much damage, and there's still a healthy unit of Screamers to support as well but you can see i've kind of actually cleared out the rest of the battlefield here it's not i'm not feeling that it's that far out of balance as much as the balance of power might have you think so i got a relatively healthy alchemist here and if i can go three three v one with maybe both of the compasses plus the alchemist you might actually be able to beat mr feathered prince here he's only got 50 armor so the alchemist should be able to do some damage to him if she can get hits just a matter of ifs right ifs ands or buts uh, but the Flesh Hounds, they are still alive. Those ones are going to be shortly crumbling. We also managed to get rid of this one as well. So definitely with some build fine-tune adjustments and better micro, less friendly fire with comets. This might have turned out a little bit differently, but we'll watch the compass as it uh, hits Mr. Feather Prince here, just poking him in the bum. Those, uh, those nice brass oxen just... Just bopping him right where it counts. And they're not doing much, but uh, I wonder actually if each of those horn bops is doing 160 weapon strength. That's actually kind of a hilarious amount of DPS. I don't think that's the case, but uh, fire there just kind of goes through the barrier. doesn't do a lot, but given that uh, my caster is very likely to die soon and I'm not going to continue to get infinite winds of magic, we might as well just drop a couple comets. So both of the compasses queue up comets on... Horus here and Godira is just going to stand in the pocket and take it for the most part. Tries to dodge that one a little bit, but still does a huge amount of damage. Finally, I get some comets that are not primarily friendly fire, but just in time, Jade Shield doesn't quite block all the damage. I was a tiny bit late there uh, on that uh, that blue fire. Wasn't quite able to save the Dragon Blooded Lord, so now she's going to get chased off and probably finish off by the Zine Screamers, and without her leadership, I'm going to run into some army loss issues, potentially. The Alchemist did end up taking quite a bit of heat from the Pink Horrors, so now is not really healthy enough to contest against Feathered Prince, although both of the compasses still have quite a bit of HP. It's almost like a big, annoying Armored Corpse Guard that doesn't necessarily heal itself. I would say Corpse Guard's definitely just more useful in general, but uh, this thing, I'm kind of coming around to it a little bit. I hate it. I hate that I love it, but I do love it, but I also hate it. <laughs> it's so slow and just kind of silly, honestly. Definitely my the, the meme unit of Cathay. There's no question in my mind. This is an absolute meme unit, but it can actually be pretty good. I don't know if either of them actually paid for themselves in terms of damage value here. This one actually got pretty close. 
you get good contacts with those comets, it can be quite nice. And, I mean, with this type of an infinite Winds of Magic build, as long as you keep enough to keep generating more by casting with the Shooting Gun Lord, you can actually throw some spells with these guys, too. And in that way, they'll pay for themselves a little, little bit better. I wish they had more support abilities, to be honest. Like, it would be nice if they had some kind of a air area of effect. Uh, like, even just like a minor melee attack buff or something to help your offensive melee output with Cathay would help quite a bit. That is one of Cathay's biggest weaknesses. Hopefully, that'll get addressed when DLCs come around. But uh, Feathered Prince, man, has to be one of the coolest looking Demon's Prince setups. He's going to get bathed in some fire here. A little bit of friendly fire. Whoop, whoop, let's go. <laughs> Let's run straight through the camera. But the, the compasses are putting up a valiant effort. You can see here he's not actually doing that much damage. Like I said, the Longmas come back around. Finally notice I have them. They would have been nice to maybe save my uh, Lord a little bit earlier. But she didn't end up getting finished off by the Screamers. A little bit more blue fire just to go after my infantry. Pink fire, that's right. Big fire is the area of effect. Blue fire is a magic missile. Keep forgetting. I, got, I always got to remind myself. <laughs> new game, new spells, new everything. You would think this far in that I would have got everything down, but we're still learning. I also, somebody posted that I was mispronouncing Longmas. It, like, it's supposed to be Longmas or something? I don't know. I, I'm, I'm going to be honest. I blame Creative Assembly and Games Workshop for the mispronunciation in-game. But I'll try my best to improve. I yeah, promise how much I'll succeed, but I'll definitely try my best. Anyway, at this point, I'm going to run into army losses, despite the fact that both the compasses are still decently healthy. It's understandable. Uh, there's really no way of me killing the Feathered Prince at that point, although I was pretty much able to kill off almost the rest of the army. Just that one unit of Screamers, and uh, definitely the mobility for Gojira here. Combination of Screamers and Flesh Hounds is quite brutal. I mean, we were able to deal with the Flesh Hounds relatively well, but the Screamers then came in and just wrecked my entire face. So, yeah, honestly, hindsight, probably taking the Shingun Lord on the ground and taking uh, just, like, ground-based cavalry rather than the Longmas. Rockets also didn't do anything for me here, just trading them out for the cannons. And instead of focusing on the Soul Grinder early on and probably just focusing on Zabrik as much as possible, trying to snipe the Lord. One thing, it's tough to predict against Demons of Chaos what they might do, but one thing you can always be sure of is they're going to have a relatively expensive you know, uh, important lord that you should probably try and snipe as quickly as possible. Especially given that the Demons of Chaos charge up their army ability by their lord specifically dealing damage. So, um, you want to try and go after that there. But in hindsight, you know, 2020, 2022, or whatever, uh, <laughs> the, the wagons, compasses, like I said, I hate them, I love them, I, lo I hate that I love them, I love to hate them. They're actually pretty good, I think, if used correctly. Here, the extra winds of magic, I don't think was enough of a benefit, even outside of paying for themselves. One of them almost did pay for themselves, though, so eh, maybe. I mean, again, with some fine-tuning, maybe this build could work a lot better. Micro-wise, definitely just letting my peasant long spears eat those shots initially from all the horrors was a mistake. Pulling them would have allowed me a little bit of extra anti-large resources to help clean up these screamers and the flesh hounds even more efficiently. Maybe actually protect my lord, just go, like, land on some spears, right? And then the, uh, the Jade Warriors definitely would have taken more damage, but they would have taken less damage overall with that armor and missile block. But it's a learning experience. Uh, I can't say I played many land battles at all against Demons of Chaos, so the cannon was definitely a bright spot for me, though. I do think, again, I would probably just trade the rockets out for a cannon in hindsight uh, for Gojira. Uh, Zarek didn't actually do all that much damage at the end of the day. He was able to just tank. Pretty nice, that flying barrier monster. Quite strong. Uh, we were able to take out the Soul Grinder without it paying for itself, but then the Horrors came in, and yeah, they got pretty good damage value. Actually, maybe not so much. Interesting. Feels like they definitely did a lot. I guess, really, it was mostly the Screamers and the Flesh Hounds, right? Yeah. Interesting. Well, anyway, hopefully you guys enjoyed this. If you do like this sort of content, be sure to like, subscribe, hit that bell notification button every time I upload a new video. You'll be notified. Thanks again for watching. We'll see you next time.